from a drugstore parking lot in the dead of night comes a frantic 911 call. Oh my God. Oh my God. A violent showdown between two men vying for the attention of a blonde named Candy. Cops arrive to find the woman hysterical, cradling the lifeless body of the love of her life in her arms. The only eyewitness to what happens is Candy Hall. But which man is dead? The scorned husband, or is it her lover? I begged him to stay home and fight for me. Cops are about to discover a tawdry love triangle. It's this kind of salacious story, and it's this murder. The likes of which a tight-knit community has never seen. You've got two families that live really close to each other. There's an affair involved. And I opened up the front door to these three strangers. They said, there's been two shots of a gun. Candy Hall is the woman behind the harrowing 911 call. Candy, her husband Rob, and their two teenage daughters had just moved from California to Idaho, where they settled in Meridian a quiet town at the foot of the majestic Rockies. Rob and Candy Hall had been married for more than 15 years, and by a lot of accounts from their friends, were happy. Rob worked as a computer guy at the local sheriff's department. Candy was a paralegal, but the 40-year-old wife and mother was dealing with career struggles. She had recently lost a job at another law firm, and so she was looking for somewhere to work, and that's how she met Emmett, was through being a paralegal. Enter Emmett Corrigan, her soon-to-be boss. The rising legal star was boyishly handsome, cocky, and ambitious, and at just 30 years old, had just opened his own law practice. Emmett was, uh, by all accounts, an up-and-coming kind of hotshot attorney. Emmett appeared to lead a charmed life. Not only did he have a thriving career, he had a beautiful wife named Ashley. How long were you and Emmett dating before he proposed? We were dating like two months. We dated really fast and we both just kind of knew it was what we wanted. They were married in a Mormon temple. By the time Ashley's 30, she has five kids, uh, three girls and two boys. The Corrigans were the picture of the squeaky clean all-American family. And with Emmett's career on the up and up, the future looked bright. Emmett is very driven, very enthusiastic. He was going to start taking more clients and be very successful. And Candy was thrilled to be part of a vibrant new firm. But just as her professional life was making a turn for the better, her personal life was falling apart. She was having problems in her own marriage. Candy at times had told people that Rob had been abusive toward her, that Rob had had an affair of his own. Reeling from the news of her husband's infidelity, Candy immersed herself into work, logging long hours at the office. She was in a place where she was looking for something else. And it seems Candy found that something else in her dashing young boss, 10 years her junior. She was looking for something to be fulfilling to her, and Emmett had filled that for her. It wasn't long before Candy and Emmett struck up a torrid affair, exchanging racy emails, spicy text messages, and indulging in late-night rendezvous. They were having sex, apparently sometimes in the office. They tried to keep the relationship on the down low, but soon the illicit affair became an open secret in the office. There were a number of co-workers who said they knew what was going on, and clients also knew in some cases. And around that time, Ashley, newly pregnant with her fifth child, noticed her husband becoming distant. At what point did you realize that something started to shift with Emmett? I started thinking, there's got to be another woman or something. And the kids were starting to say, does he live here anymore? He's always at work. Looking back, Ashley remembers from the get-go, she had uneasy feelings about Emmett's new work wife. I said, Emma, I don't feel good about this one. And he was like, what do you mean? She's like the, a mother figure. Like, she really believes in me. She thinks that I'm going to be this great defense attorney. A mother figure who showered new mom Ashley with gifts. She had sent me presents when the baby was born for myself and the baby. She sent you presents? She sent me presents. This is while she's having an affair mm -hmm. with your husband? Yep. I even took all of his baby pictures with blankets that she had given me. Did you suspect that she had a thing for your husband or that he may have had one for her? 
To be honest, I'd always be like, she's like 40, he just turned 30. Ashley, no, there's no way. I mean, you're, you're 28 years old. But despite glaring red flags flying, Ashley was convinced she was paranoid when she made an appointment with the therapist, Emmett didn't show up. Did you seek counseling? I ended up going by myself to this appointment and I kind of sat in there asking him to fix me. Like, I think I have issues and just like started going off to this counselor and by the end he was like, Ashley, I feel like something's really wrong. Desperate to save her marriage, Ashley planned a special night. She hoped it would finally convince her husband to stay home. It was kind of one of those days where I'm like, today's it, I need him to see us. I'm gonna have the kids all dressed to the nines and the food and everything's gonna be perfect. And he came home late, the food was cold, the kids were tired and he didn't need a bite of my food. And like so many other nights, Emmett picked a fight and then took off. Emmett came and said, hey, I'm gonna run to Walgreens real quick. I'm, I got this cold, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and just get some medicine. And I knew he was gonna be gone a long time. But this night of deceit would change everything forever. At the same time, just a few miles away, Candy tells her husband she's going to run a quick errand or something more like a hookup. So around nine o'clock, Candy, her car pulls into Walgreens and then Emmett's truck pulls into Walgreens and Candy says she got in Emmett's truck and then they went over to a gas station, filled up his truck with gas and then they went to a nearby subdivision and they had sex in the truck. Love and lust clearly had Candy and Emmett thinking no one knew, until an odd coincidence would change everything. Candy's daughter just happened to drive into the parking lot and noticed her mom's empty car. Thinking it was strange, she called her dad. Well, Rob starts to wonder what's going on. And so Rob called Candy's phone. Candy answered the phone and Emmett took the phone out of her hands. Candy says that Emmett started to get um, threatening to Rob on the phone. Robert heads to Walgreens, hellbent on finding his wife on a supposed errand. As you can see on these store surveillance videos, Rob parks his pickup truck, goes through the front door and roams the aisles looking for Candy, never realizing Candy and her lover Emmett were in his pickup truck. Here you can see Rob leaving the store and checking Candy's parked BMW. Then, strangely, he gets back into his own pickup truck, pulls out, and parks again on the other side of Candy's car. His door is now just out of range of the store surveillance camera. But the unseen reality is, Rob has a gun. Rob Hall was armed with a gun that wasn't in a holster. And what happens next is a shocker. Rob's gun was a gift from Candy. Coming up, I remember looking around the room and everything just felt dizzy. A tragedy of epic proportions that will leave one man murdered and tear two families apart. They said there's been an accident, an affair. At some point, Rob provoked Emmett by saying, why don't you go home to your wife? You have five kids at home. And then that set Emmett off. 